Hello and welcome to Promoting Excellence. In this programme, we investigate the seismic shift in local government, how it is funded and its role in our communities. Now, as funding becomes increasingly devolved, we are seeing game-changing developments in economic self-reliance and bold new initiatives to ensure the social, economic and environmental well-being of local authorities. These are challenging, yet some would say reinvigorating times. And joining me in the studio to discuss the impact of this new economic environment are APSI's Chief Executive Paul O'Brien and the Corporate Director of Nottingham City Council, Andy Vaughan. The impact of these um, financial changes cannot be overstated. So what would you see as the main challenges and the main opportunities? Paul, why don't you start? <laughs> Yeah, lots of challenges, Natasha. Um, I think one of the biggest fundamental changes is devolution. You know, we know that things are being localised by 2020, in particular finance. You know, we know that that's going to fundamentally change the way things are. We know there's a lot less funding. So to say it's a seismic shift is no overstatement, is it? It really is a fundamental shift in the way that we operate. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean, you're talking about for generations, local government has been financed in a certain way. And now we're changing to a situation where 100% of that finance is going to be have to have to be raised at a local level, from local business rates, from council tax, and from other small income generation measures. So that's hugely challenging. We're going to get some freedoms as a result of that devolution, but it could be a poison chalice in some senses. We could get all these additional responsibilities without the funding uh, to deliver on them. However, that's a challenge for local government, that's a challenge for leaders in local government um, to move forward, create innovative solutions um, on behalf of their communities, because if they don't, who else is going to do it? Who is going to be out there um, acting on behalf of uh, residents and communities in that local area? It's local government's job. We need to provide the community leadership. Andy, let's move to you. I mean, it's a very quick learning curve for everybody, isn't it, really? The whole financial landscape is changing fundamentally. Is local government prepared, do you think, for this new relationship and this new responsibility with its communities? No, I don't think we've got a choice, have we? And I think, I think we have to be prepared. And this is really our leadership moment in local government. If you look at Nottingham, we've saved £100 million out of our budgets in the last five years. But we have another £35 million to save by the 1st of April next year. The, the cuts that uh, our local government are facing are relentless and that really forces us to reimagine and change the way we provide public services in order to survive. New commercial realities totally taking shape. Uh, do you feel that you're coping as a local government? Yeah, I, I, think, I think the problem we've got is that around 75% of our, of our budget is spent on adult social care and children in care. So commercialising in those areas, which is 75% of our net, our net expenditure, is, is tough and is difficult. In other areas, absolutely, we're driving incredibly hard at, at commercialism. Um, not, not for the sake of, of, of commercial for its own purpose, but profit for a purpose, to reinvest in those vital services uh, that we provide to, to citizens. So I would say commercialism is helping to dampen the impact of the cuts. I'm not certain that that therefore means there'll be no impact to the cuts on people within the city. There's only a very small percentage of the public who interact with those services at any given point in time. And the public very often care about those sort of livability services, those, you know, are the street lights working? Is the public realm safe? Is it clean? You know, is it green? You know, those sort of things are what the public are interested in, the majority of them. But budgets wise, a lot of that budget spent on the likes of adult social care that only a small percentage of the community are interacting with at any given point in time. Mm. It, it's, a, it's a falsehood, Paul, isn't it? And I, yeah. I hear described is the, the choice between universal service provision, you know, mm. and social behaviour, clean mm. streets, parks, mm. and adult social care, looking after our most vulnerable, often at the end of their lives. Yeah. That, that's a real falsehood. We, we have to deliver both of those services and how we do that uh, is, is one of our great leadership challenges. Yeah. Indeed it is. Yeah. Uh, Self-sufficiency, is that an achievable target overall, would you say? Um, I think where we're at at present, I think there's a long-term vision that government has about that, but where we're at at present is obviously going to be hugely challenging for some of the most deprived, some of the poorest communities mm -hmm. um, at present. If you're moving to 20, in 2020 to a situation where you're going to be reliant on business rates and council tax predominantly with other small charges, um, then for some areas where they've had ingrained economic problems for decades, 
um, they're going to struggle to hit self-sufficiency right away, if they ever will. So there will need to be some form of redistribution mechanism at a local level to take account of deprivation and, you know, and poverty. But we really need to be focused on tackling these things from a, a, a commercial perspective, but with public values. You've got a choice, haven't you? You, you can either be crushed by, by the budget and mm. withdraw and cut services, uh, mm. withdraw from our communities, or you can choose to adopt a different, a different, more enlightened, we would say, yeah. strategy. And I think that's what we're trying to do on energy, Absolutely. but it's also what we're trying to do on transport, it's what we're trying to do on leisure, it's what we're trying to do across all of the services within Nottingham. Um, but transformation is almost day-to-day um, -day business. We are still an organisation that spends £800 million each year. We have an awful lot of spending power. We had an awful lot of opportunity. We operate in very diverse and different and large markets. If we get the leadership right and the skills right at an officer level and the political leadership and support all aligned, I, I think, you know, mm. I don't want to be too upbeat because, you know, none of us would choose to be here, <laughs> but nor do we need to be destroyed by the financial challenges that are ahead of us. OK, well, we look forward to following the journey and to meeting you both again soon and talking through all of the things that we've discussed today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.